The first legal hanging in California was of Jose Forni. On December 10, 1852 Jose Forner, also known as Jose Forni was hung in the state of California for the murder of a Mexican man named Jose Rodriguez, during a robbery which went horribly awry. He was executed on what is now known as Russian Hill, specifically to allow his execution to be seen for miles. This is possibly one of the most significant hangings for California, because this was the first of only two legal hangings that took place in the state. According to Forner's recorded confession, he was answering the call of nature when he was approached by Rodriguez, who said I want your money, and then lunged at him with a knife which cut him on the calf of his leg. Rodriguez then grabbed the $300 to $400 that Forner had on him and took off. Forner proceeded to apprehend the attacker, only to become involved in a fight with the man. After the dust settled both men were soaked in each other's blood, with Rodriguez dying in the street and Forner later being arrested, tried, and put to death for defending himself. It was a dry, dusty October afternoon in San Francisco, California, when Jose Forner parted from two of his friends to go for a walk towards Happy Valley and see the steam paddy work. While admiring the machine, Forner was greeted by Rodriguez. Forner noted that Rodriguez had greeted him warmly, as if the two had known for years. Rodriguez proceeded to ask him if he wanted to take a drink, but as he was replying he noticed that Rodriguez was exhibiting strange behavior. Forner declined, and hurried away to find a place to relieve himself. However he stated that once he got to the scene of the crime, he removed his money belt and knife, placed them both on the ground and at that moment Rodriguez ran up to him, picked up his knife that was lying on the ground, and proceeded to threaten him. When Forner lied to him about the amount of money he had on him, Rodriguez became even more hostile, and slashed the calf of Forner, stole his money belt, and took off. Forner proceeded to follow him, and even admitted that he was prepared to kill him if necessary, only because Rodriguez had displayed no regard for his life while holding him at knife point. Once he apprehended Rodriguez the two men began to fight, which resulted in the death of Rodriguez and the indictment, conviction of Jose Forner. Forner who was convicted a few days since the district court of the murder of a Mexican, in Pleasant Valley, on the 13th of September last, was arraigned for the purpose of receiving his sentence. Death being the only penalty prescribed by our statute for the offense. The courtroom was crowded with spectators, assembled to witness the solemn ceremony. The prisoner seemed resigned to his fate and received his sentence without betraying the least momentary emotion. Though his pallid and careworn countenance evince most painfully the effects of the agony that he has heretofore suffered in the consciousness of the doom that awaited him. We understand that he makes daily use of his Bible and manifests an anxiety to make that preparation for his death to which he is exhorted by the judge. The usual preliminary statements were made to him through an interpreter, and the end the reply he made to the question why sentence should not be passed upon him, was, that the deceased had first assaulted him. His Honor, Judge Lake, then proceeded, in a solemn and impressive manner, to pass sentence upon the prisoner. Jose Forner a jury of your own selection, after an impartial and patient investigation of your case, 
have found you guilty of willful and deliberate murder. With the verdict of the jury the court is entirely satisfied. Indeed the evidence was so direct and positive as to leave no shadow of doubt as to your guilt. The deed was committed in open day, with no attempt at concealment. You were first seen in hot pursuit of your victim, with a drone dagger eleven times into his body, inflicting eleven wounds, nearly all of them mortal. For this violation of the sacred laws of God and humanity, your life has become justly fortified. But little is known of your past course of life, but, it must be that this crime, which has at last brought you to a dishonored grave, is the result of a long course of guilt and crime. In view of the awful doom that awaits you, you are earnestly exhorted to spend the brief time that is allotted to you on earth in solemn meditation upon your past life and in imploring forgiveness and mercy from Almighty God. It but remains for me to pronounce the dread sentence of the law upon the verdict which the jury found against you. It is therefore adjudged by the court the prisoner at the bar, Jose Forner be taken to the jail of the county of San Francisco, and that on Friday, the 10th day of December next, between the hours of 1 and 3 p.m., he be taken to the place of execution, and that he be there hanged by the neck until he is dead. And may God have mercy on his soul. This is the first death sentence ever passed by any of the legal tribunals of our city. On December 10, 1852 Jose Forner was hung in the state of California for the murder of a Mexican man named Jose Rodriguez, during a robbery which went horribly awry. The last words of Jose Forney, before his execution was, my friends, you have come to see an innocent man die. I die for having killed an assassin. He attempted to rob me. I resisted. He stabbed me and fled. Maidened and smarting from my wounds, I pursued, overtook, and killed him. I am a native of Valencia, Spain. I have but few friends in San Francisco. I have resided in Cuba, where I have many friends. I was tried by a judge and jury who were utter strangers to me. I could produce no witnesses in my favor. What led to my killing my assailant is known only to God and myself. What I have said is true. After I have spoken these few words I shall never speak more. No doubt those who tried me acted justly according to the testimony. They could not have known the truth. The Americans are good people. They have ever treated me well and kindly. I thank them for it. I have nothing but love and kindly feelings for all. Farewell, people of San Francisco. World, farewell. A continuous line of human beings was pressing up the hill all the morning, until a crowd numbering 3,000 at least had gathered together nearly a tenth of San Francisco's population at this time the assemblage was indeed a singular one, there being at least one-fourth of the number composed of youths, women and children. Women elbowed their way as near as possible to have a full view of the gallows, whilst others were on horseback and in carriages, riding around with as much gaiety as if on a pleasure drive. But what was most shocking was to see respectable-looking parents taking their little sons and daughters into such a heterogeneous crowd, to witness such a terrible spectacle. Despite the slight rain, they stood it out with heroical fortitude and patience worthy of a better occasion. Before the prisoner had arrived, 
The small boys amuse themselves with playing marbles, the bigger ones with dog fights, whilst others wild away the time recounting their experience in such matters. Thank you for watching Death Row.